Welcome everybody, I'm John Zadar. This is the last weekend of April. It is April 24th and you are watching On Top and Hot. What I do here is I bring you OTC and penny stocks. They got catalyst, potential, stocks you need to be considering if you want an opportunity to make bank. And I've got one that is brewing up right now. Come on, let me show you what I got. Yo ho ho, we're looking at NoHo, ticker N-O-H-O, -O. this is Novation Holdings. And of course, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website doing our initial due diligence. And I'm going to give you three reasons why you should be using this site too. One, all this information they give you is absolutely free, no membership fees. Two, you don't even have to log in or sign in, no passwords to remember, no passwords to forget. But the most important reason is this site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all of the current information on the OTC stocks. What is the purpose of going over to Google and sorting through decades of old information when you can come over here and get what's current right now? Get it right the first time, folks. Easy peasy. So we are looking at NoHo, ticker N-O-H-O, finished the day at triple zero two, not double zero, triple zero two with a 33% gain. Now triple zero two is a super duper low price folks. The absolute lowest price that you can buy a stock for on the OTC market is triple zero one. So this is just above the basement floor. Now I've got to be honest here. Personally, I do not even look at stocks that are under triple zero five, and I feel a little uncomfortable even sharing those types with you. So why am I showing you NoHo now? Well, there is a storm brewing around this company right now, and I think it is about time we look at it because it's going to probably produce at least 800 to 1,000 percent gains when it takes off, and that could be any time now. So, the company did have 33% gains today. They are on the pink tier, but they have limited information. Now, this isn't great, especially if you're going the wrong way. See, what this means is they're late filing. Could be financial filings, which is normally what it is. If you're late filing your financials, you get pink limited. You continue to be late. They pull you off the market and put you in timeout. They call it the expert market. You're not delisted, but you can't be bought, you can't be sold, you can't do anything until you get your filings caught up. Once they're caught up, you come back onto the market pink. Now, speaking about her financials, I came over here and you're going to look with me. Her financials are all up to date. There is one two days ago, April 22nd, her quarterly. Three months ago, every three months you put in a quarterly, there is another one on time. At the same time, they put in their annual report right there. And if you don't use a CPA to audit them, you got to have an attorney letter follow behind them. Well, there it is. So everything looks good there. There is nothing late or behind. And then down here on their SEC filings, we see the 10Q, which is also the filing report. And that was put in on the last couple of days of last month. So to me, Everything looks caught up in current. So there is a very good likelihood that that's going to bounce back up to pin current, which is a catalyst all in itself. But that's not why we're here. The company does have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. These are important. We want to see these and they've got them. So they look real good in that regard. Now, they have a stock promotion going on right now. That's one of the reasons I noticed it and one of the reasons I'm showing it to you right now. This means that the company is paying other companies to write about them and post the information online. It's not a pump and dump, it's just an editorial. It's an article, just letting people know what's going on. So there was news and we're going to cover that here in just a second. Now they say the company is a shell risk, which I actually find a bit curious. This company has been on the expert market for a while. It was abandoned. It had no management. Think of it as a boat just floating out on the water without anybody on the boat. And that's where people like Karen Courier come into the picture. Now you're probably wondering, who the heck is Karen Courier? Well, I've talked about her before, but first, before I get into her, you can see her name right there and she is listed as the consultant. And I got this information from the most recent disclosure of Novation Holdings, February 28th, 2022. So you can see she's involved. So who is Karen Courier? 
Well, she's an up-and-coming legend on the OTC market, but she's not the only one. There are other companies and people like uh, SS Monopoly, Alpha Ridge, even George Sharp, and there are more. What do all these people have in common? They identify companies that have been yanked off of the open market, put onto the expert market because there's nobody running the company. They were just abandoned. So the companies have no business. Filings are very late since nobody's been there to file any of them. And if they don't get cleaned up soon, they are going to be delisted and those tickers will be gone forever. So these people go to the courts and say, look, I've identified a company that nobody's taken charge of. I'll take control. The courts say, if nobody comes forward to contest this, we'll give you custodialship of this. Now, when they get custodialship, they get everything that is attached to that company. All the old history, all the old debt, all the dirty laundry, and they have to take care of it all. Whatever it costs, they've got to fix it. Then they've got to pay all the fees to get it back on the market get it pink. But now they've invested all this money and they've got a hollow, clean shell ready for a reverse merger. And that's how they make their money. This is very much like a SPAC. It is a clean shell. Once they've got it all taken care of, they go look for a private company that wants to go public and doing a reverse merger is a lot quicker than doing an IPO, a lot cheaper, and it's a lot cheaper than doing a SPAC on the NASDAQ. That takes a lot of money. So not only can these private companies get onto the board cheap, but we can get into these startup companies cheap. Because remember, these are private companies already making money. They just want to get public. They don't want to be private. Any more. And Karen Courier just made a deal about 45 days ago with this company and it looks juicy. So even though they tell us it is a shell risk, I get the strong impression that this is going to change very soon and very abruptly. This is a big deal that they made. Now they made this deal about two months ago, but they've already got it added to their business description here. And we'll get some more information about this when we actually look at the news press. But they tell us here, the company currently owns and operates Kraft Clouds, a next-gen NFT platform and ecosystem designed to expand on the current offerings of the marketplace-based portals and deliver a platform solution for both creators and consumers as well as large-scale enterprises and brands. Folks, this is like a Coinbase or a Robinhood. It's a new broker for NFTs. They're going to be helping people buy them, help people make them. They're going to help these companies market their huge brands like Coca-Cola and everybody else, Porsche, or whoever comes to them. It is big, big business. It is the biggest explosive business I have ever seen, folks. I'm not exaggerating here. Do you know in 2020, NFTs did just under a hundred million dollars. Last year, they did 25 billion. You heard me right. We jumped from a hundred million to 25 billion dollars. And they expect that to just more than double in 2022. Folks, that's huge business. And how many platforms, brokers do we have selling NFTs? Probably not enough. There's going to be enough business to go around. So this should be huge. Now, as I said, there was no news today, so there is no catalyst. But the stock is current, or at least <laughs> on the market and selling. So what was the relative volume today? Well, it looks like we have about uh, 39 to 40 million shares a day, which sounds pretty good actually, but you got to keep in mind at the price of the stock, 0 0.0001, you could actually get 1 million shares for a measly $100 bill. So it wouldn't take a whole lot of buyers to get 40 million shares. Today, we had a little bit more. 52 million and I'm expecting that to climb more and more. What is her share structure? Oh, sorry about that folks. We got 13 and a half billion shares in the float. I'm not going to let that deter me from a play, from a swing trade. However, for a long hold, I would definitely consider that. That is screaming reverse split whenever they get close to wanting to go to the QB or the NASDAQ. Financials, we know we're not going to see anything over there because they're a shell risk. Now we see dashes here. The dashes, let me come down to the quarterlies. Yeah, we got dashes here too. Now you get zeros when you file the form. If you don't file anything, you get a dash, which could be part of the reason they're pink limited up here. 
Once those filings we just got done looking at get cleared and through, when this goes up to Pink Limited, these should all be zeros then and no more dashes. So that's going to help it. Going pink will definitely help. All right, disclosures, we've already looked at all those, so let's go take a look at that news. So the news tells a lot of interesting information here. The first thing that stood out to me was right here, September 2017, and then August 2021. Folks, that is four years of silence. Nothing going on at all. This current status information tells us that the company's in trouble and they're trying to get back on the market. So I don't know what happened. But what's most curious is that all of this yellow through 2017, through the silent period of four years, and up here to November of last year, which is just five months ago, all of this has to do with cannabis. It's all about hemp. But there is nothing about cannabis or hemp now. I couldn't find any information about it. Matter of fact, there was only one piece of information I could find, and it is in this news press that came out in February. Novations Holdings Inc. acquires Craft Cloud's NFT creation platform marketplace. So this is the big news. This is what it's all about. This came out February 1st. Novatia Holdings acquired 100% of Craft Clouds, the next-gen NFT platform and ecosystem for both users and creators and to help those big companies market their brands. Now, they've added some extra features to their apps that others don't have. One of them is called an on-chain royalty rather than off-chain royalty. Now, I don't know exactly how that works, but I know how royalties work. That's getting paid over and over again for something you did once in the past. So this sounds like they're going to be giving them more of their royalties rather than less. That's always a good thing. Then they go on to tell us how much money has been generated by the NFTs in the last few years, as I was telling you. They had $23 billion in 2021 compared to only $100 million in 2020. And they anticipate at the end of this year for us to be over $35 billion. And by 2025, they expect this to be over $80 billion. That is a huge market, folks. And to show you how fast the user base is growing, if you look at their wallet engagement, they had just about 5,000 wallets for NFTs at the beginning of 2021. By the end of 2021, they had over 140,000 users, and God only knows where it's at right now in 2022. Now, this is a very important facet of this type of business. We have a very clear cut strategy for attracting and retaining the rights artists and brands for the Craft Clouds marketplace. If you're going to sell NFTs and make money doing it, you're going to have to sell NFTs people want. So you've got to have celebrities, influencers, you've got to have the right rights brands. Things that people want to be a part of, whether they be rock stars, artists, sports celebrities, whatever they may be. And they say they've got a strategy to not only attract them, but hang on to them. They haven't given us a lot of information, but it is an important detail. And I'll be real interested to hear what they're going to be doing. But I like the fact that they're aware that they have to be on the ball with this. And the very last thing they tell us, Novation further announces that all parties have mutually agreed to terminate the letter of intent as executed in November for the company to acquire Legends of Hemp and Terra Vita CBD, paving the way for the company to further dedicate its focus on acquiring and developing technology-related companies and solutions. Sounds to me like they've made up their mind to be out of cannabis and hemp. They've backed out of the most recent deal they just made five months ago. And what happened to all the rest of that cannabis and hemp from 2017? I have no idea. It's not mentioned anywhere. It just isn't in view. So I'm imagining and believing it's gone. All we've got are NFTs. And then we had one last piece of news over here that came out February 3rd. Novation Holdings wholly owned subsidiary Craft Clouds engages Media Hawk to lead digital media marketing. 
So this news came out February 3rd. Novation Holdings Inc. has engaged nationally acclaimed full service marketing company, MediaHawk, to lead its corporate digital media and marketing initiatives. Craft Cloud intends to utilize MediaHawk to assist in both developing and execution of its marketing strategy. This will include, but not limited to, digital advertising, social media marketing and engagement, corporate branding, content creation, web development, marketing, collateral materials, and the engagement of social media influencers. We specifically chose to partner with MediaHawk due to their track record of success in developing brands and building brand engagement. This is something you simply cannot buy. MediaHawk is a wholly owned subsidiary of Star 8 Corporation, also on the OTC market under the ticker ST. RH. So there you go, folks. You've got a company that has had a reverse merger, had an acquisition, but it was two months ago. They are now doing their stock promotion. They waited two months before they started it. Must have been a reason for that. We're looking at it now when it has a price of triple zero two. And we fully anticipate this to give us a good bounce. Now we're going to go look at the chart and I don't expect that chart to have a whole lot of activity on it because triple zeros don't normally have it. But we are expecting it. Let's go take a look at that chart. So this is NOHO, N-O-H-O. We are doing our charting on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform I got just for signing up for a free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. You can too. Sign up, keep your account open, and you can use TOS just like I am. So this is NOHO three-year, one-week chart. I was curious to see what it looked like during that period when they had no news for four years. Well, there it is. Flat, flat, flat. Except for the Twin Towers right there, these guys actually jumped 1,000%. Now, this is a weekly chart, so that rose 1,000% in a week. Woohoo! Looking good. Then you got all of 2021, which is about cannabis. There was nothing else but cannabis. Lots of price action, lots of volume. Looks good, all above the 200. Soon as the new year came, she started to fall. Don't know what happened, but there is no excitement. Came all the way back down to the 200 day SMA and is now underneath it on the weekly chart. And her technicals look pretty weak on the weekly. Let's come down to the one year one day. So she is riding on the 200, bouncing on the 200, lots of price action above the 200, and then she lost it and fell. Technicals on the daily chart, little stronger, little stronger. They are pushing up a wee bit. Let's come on down to that six month, four hour chart. Still above the 200, bouncing on the 200, lots of price action. When she started to fall, we had one last ditch effort to touch that 200, hoping not to fall, but she did. She started falling hard and got under the 50 now, the yellow. And here's our last ditch effort touching the 50 day. <laughs> Could not hang on. And she fell down to her triple zero flat line, which we're going to definitely see on the 20 day one hour. Ta-da! Looks like a picket fence. That's what I call the flat line for triple zero. She just goes up and down between two digits, may even stop in between two digits. Hit a low bubble here, the absolute lowest on the open market, triple zero one, and we are just a smidge above that at two and just below the 200. Now I can't say anything looks dynamite right now, it doesn't. However, we have got a company that has gotten out of cannabis, started a whole new direction with this NFT brokerage firm, this, this platform, which I truly believe is going to be big. There aren't a lot of NFT brokers out there. There's a lot of cryptocurrency and they're all doing pretty good. I anticipate this to do even better. So I like this regardless of what the charts look like. I think it's an excellent time to get in and hold. Yes, folks, get in at this price and hold. That's my opinion. I'm not licensed. I can't give you advice, but I am. I really like what I see here. I can't say any more than that. It looks prime to me. You're not going to hear me say this very often, but I think NoHo is going to the moon. I do, folks. Now, I'm not licensed and I'm not telling you to buy it, but I am telling you I have strong feelings about this stock. First off, 
The management themselves abandoned everything they were doing with cannabis. All of 2017, they were building it up. 2021 comes along. After four years of silence, they're still building it up. They make an acquisition in November, still building up cannabis. And then all of a sudden, they throw it all away for NFTs. Why would they do that? You could see all the volume on the charts for last year. You saw the price action. It was far above the 200 and they threw it away. I'll tell you why. At least this is what I'm thinking. They saw that NFTs did $100 million worth in 2020. Then they saw it do $25 billion in 2021. Oh my God. How many NFT platforms are out there? A half a dozen at the most? Well, divide 25 billion by six. You're getting like uh, $4 billion per business. And I don't know if there's actually that many. When cryptocurrency came out, cryptocurrency platforms started popping up all over and they're doing very well. I think this is an early mover company. They're getting into a market that is blowing up and they're right there in front of it. Now, I don't think the chart looks great right now. The price is super low. The company hasn't even got a whole lot happening. But now is the time to get in because everything is set to go. Everything is built and ready. And at this price, folks, we could see 10,000% gains easy. That's two cents, two cents. Now, I don't know if that's going to be a day, a week or a month, but once this thing starts moving, it's going to catch a lot of traction. Remember, NFTs are popular, even if they're built around stocks. I like this, folks, and I'm going to be into it. That's my own personal opinion. Do your own DD. There's not a lot more you can look at, but look at it and settle it inside. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.